Welcome back, everybody. We're going into hour number two of our four hours of pawns and patrons here today. I'm just setting up like one more thing for each of your tokens because I have to make sure that you have sight so that you can actually see through fog. And then we will get started. Let's do this. Uh, Anna and Jen, would both of you try to remember, if possible, that I haven't made it so that your character sheets permanently have sight and fog clearing. So before we go down to the next place, uh, I'm gonna have to like update your character sheets, but at least your tokens will be able to see and clear the fog in just one moment. As I rapidly finish setting things up. Uh, when are we supposed to remind you? When we go before to the we, next place? Before we transition to like next uh, parts of the world. Okay. Let's see. Um, yeah, okay, perfect. Wonderful. Then now you can see everything. Fantastic. Then here we are. Down here in front of the keep on the hill. So, um, before you stands the end of an old dirt road, now completely overrun with weeds and, and gross, sickly, rotting vines uh, that rises towards the ruined citadel up ahead. Um, a grisly sight stops you in your tracks as you approach. I imagine it's like mid-morning. You probably set out, you know, after all getting together and, you know, rearing each other up and then striking out across the moors with your goats and your horses and your herding, herding dogs uh, alongside. Um, so, you know, there's, there's decently good light, but a grisly sight bars your way. A pair of bodies secured to poles by long ropey vines. The wicked vines have wormed their way inside the body's eyes, ears, and mouths. And to your horror, you realize the vines are still moving. So you can see this uh, a little bit up to the north, right about here. Grola bless at the sight of the dead bodies, screams in fear, a very high pitched scream. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of hides behind his mom immediately. Oh. Yeah, Red my is like, <laughs> you're what? Oh yeah, my ladies were staring at the bodies, but upon you screaming, all four of them look at you like, <laughs> it's a dead body. And like Red Ray is kind of ashamed of her son hiding behind her. She's like, come on, son, we're, of course there's going to be dead bodies. We're out here, we set out to adventure. What are, what are you expecting? Don't start off like that. Just stand like the others. Jeez. Like she says, the dead are more afraid of us than we are of them. Go on. Go on, my pretties. Let's approach the gate. Um, Del Derp enthusiastically walk forward Fantastic. with her iron skillet. <laughs> yeah, so go ahead and move yourself to where you'd like to be. Froge Dude is also immediately moving, walking toward the threat. Moving forwards to investigate. Well, not the threat, the, like, you know, situation. Fantastic. He gets in close and, and sniffs one of the vines. Amazing. So yes, uh, like, as mentioned before, the bodies are still moving very faintly. Um, Froge Dude, are you from Oakwell? Uh, let me, he has family in Oakwell. Okay, so you, you visited often enough that you, yeah. you can recognize this person. This is Kiri, the son of the smith, with all these vines growing in and out and around his body. And as you stand there looking at him, he lurches, and then the vines lift him up and then set him down in front of you. Ta -da. What's Eerie? Uh, Kiri? Kiri, you said? Kiri, yes. 
The other one, incidentally, for those of you paying attention at home, is Albin, the other son of the village smith. The brothers vanished from the village 11 days ago. Yes, so uh, I need all of you to roll for initiative. And how this is going to work <laughs> is I'm going to get one initiative roll per player, not per mm. character, using the agility bonus of your highest agility character. So let's We need see. to study up. Yep, take a look. Don't worry too much. Uh, I'm agility. adding fine nice. horrors. Dune Tish has got an 18 agility. Amazing. So let's see. We've got Rachel with 16. Anna with a six. <clears throat> Neil Delder. with a two. Mm -hmm. And Jen with a seven. Fantastic. And then let's organize that descending. Well, unfortunately, the vine horrors were ready for you more so than you were ready for the vine horrors. And so, uh, Froge Duday, this vine <gasps> horror in front, front of you. Oh no! no! Froge Duday! <laughs> it's our best character. <laughs> this Froge vine horror die. strikes out at you. Let's see. Oh no, it gets to attack twice. <gasps> 20, 20 plus two. Froge <laughs> Duday, oh, no. what is your armor class? Uh, 10. Okay, a 12 hits. Uh oh. It strikes at you with these thorny vines. So let's see. I need to take a second look at this. Oh, God. Yeah, well, yeah. Everyone's like, we must protect him frog. first. Yeah, everybody <laughs> brought so much hype about the frog. And it, it's OK. <laughs> He's only He only does 1d4 damage, so it's going to be fine. <laughs> How much health? Oh, my god. So oh, my god. <laughs> no. Remember how I told you about my luck? <laughs> Remember how I oh, told you I used to walk? Oh. Up, sniffs this corpse with vines bursting out of it, and then like <gasps> it just steps down and rakes a thorny vine across the front of Froge Duday, and just like black green frog blood goes spraying, and Froge Duday lies on the floor, uh, <laughs> laid out cold. Meanwhile, this vine horror shambles forwards. Uh, looks like it's got a move of 20, oh, so there's God. no problem approaching Beggy and strikes oh, no. a second time. Oh no, Pebeggy too? <laughs> Fortunately, it only dealt one damage to Pebeggy. Do I need to record that or did it automatically do it? Well, unfortunately, Pebeggy only has one hit point. So, second, <sighs> Vine Horror steps down and attacks Del Derp. Oh god, Del Derp. You, you hear a muffled, like, another little high-pitched scream <laughs> from Roller Breath. <laughs> what, what is your hit point? What's your armor class? Del Derp has an ACF 10. Okay. It's a hit. It strikes at you with its thorny oh, vines. Oh god killing you, embracing no. you with thorns and tearing your flesh. <laughs> no. you well, this is die. not a good start. Mamshiro is shook. Like, how is she going to shell mushrooms now that her sister, who does the pricing, is already gone? The vine horror moves forwards to Mamshiro, <gasps> sensing her despair, not wanting her to live the kind of life without her son, and strikes, dealing two damage. Mamshiro! How much health does she have? Is she alive? Oh no, she has two health. She's dead. Well, that didn't wow. last long. Her grief was Is it two generations wiped out in front of us? <laughs> I, as, she, as she dies, she screams out the secret recipe to making the best mushrooms. <laughs> write that down, write that down. <laughs> Keep them in the shade for all good you can. <laughs> all right, Rachel. What do your characters do? Well, there's there's an important bit of background here because these are the the family of the blacksmith, right? Yes. In town. Uh, 
Beverly is a rival blacksmith, and though she, you know, recently had issues with the law, this is a this is a chance for redemption. This is partially why she's out here. But she's also very attached to Siri, who is a wanderer who is a lover. So she's going to interpose herself between uh, Siri and the monster, and she is going to attack because honor drives her to complete her task, even though she has no love for her rival blacksmiths. Amazing. Beverly. So I can step right in there and, and uh, attack. Yeah, absolutely. So you're using Beverly? I am using Beverly and she has a hammer. Yeah, and you should be able to just click under where it says melee and it'll automatically do the roll for you. Uh, attacks with a hammer, 11 to hit and with five damage. Nice, look at that, an 11 to hit. Oh, is that good enough? No, your oh, hammer gets yeah. tangled yeah, in the thorns. <laughs> it would have been such a great strike, but you still have three other characters that can act. What do they do? Ooh, uh, okay, immediately Siri is worried for her love, so she's going to rush in there uh, also, despite Beverly saying, no, stay back. And uh, Siri is going to use her big walk. She has a negative one melee, so I don't know how that's gonna work out. Oh shit! 18 to hit with her big walking stick for three damage. Nice. You crack Albin across the skull, hearing like a wet, like melon popping crunch, but his animated corpse still lives. Oh. Uh, what do you do? Siri is excited to hit and driven by love, but uh, very disappointed to see that this does not kill it. Um, Dune Tush, realizing that if her front line falls, she would potentially be under attack as well, would like to throw her dagger. Uh, is she in range for that? That looks right, yeah. Let's see, what's the range on? Oh yeah, 15 to hit is great. Your dagger thuds straight into Albin's chest, dealing two damage. Not quite enough to take it down, but doing really good. You have one more character, right? I do. Her name is Agnes, and she also has one hit point, and she is also fond of the back of the group and her meat wall. Uh, unfortunately, she only has a chisel, so I'm wondering if there's an ability here where she can come up next to Dune Touche, but assume sort of like a reactive stance, it's like hold mm. action. Is that a thing here? No, unfortunately, like I can see a warrior doing something like that, but uh, Ag Ag Agnes, the, what are you? The chest maker? No. Uh, yes, Agnes is a chest maker and a aspiring wizard. Uh, I think she would probably just choose not to act then. She's not going to uh, get involved in the battle. Okay. Jen, what do you do? Uh. Redra thinks it's her time to shine and to show her son how things must be done. You don't scream in the face of death, you stab it. That's so true. You stab it with a staff that you have in your hands right now. Uh, so Red Red does her best growl. Because you know when she named her son Growlabless, she yes. really thought he would be a fierce warrior, which that's a name, but no. So she goes, <laughs> she runs up to a. Uh... I guess we'll we'll be smart. I'll attack the one that got hit so far. She, okay. She's go actually... ahead and move yourself into range. So yeah, very smartly, Red Ray. Oh, it's it's oh, it's, it's this, this one. one over here. That oh, is, sorry uh, about wounded. that. Yes. Okay, so I I go up to this one. Yep. And then I say. May I strike you like the lightning has struck me in my herd twice. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I try to hit. Uh, how do I? So on your character sheet, Click next melee. to your melee weapon, there should be a little button that says melee above it. OK, it's there you go. Unfortunately, Red Red, not very adept with that staff, misses <laughs> entirely. And then she screams at her son to come and get into the fight. And then he's kind of just trying to hide, like... <laughs> he sees this tree. <laughs> okay, all right, he runs back behind the tree. Fantastic. And he screams out that he's looking for a better weapon. <laughs> okay. 
Fair. Anna? How about you? I'm coming you? right back, Mom. You got this. <laughs> uh... I just have so according to Dungeon Crawl Classics, is Froze Jude just dead? Like nothing brings him back? Unfortunately, level zero characters just die when they hit zero. Wow. Higher level characters have a fifty percent chance to the like you roll their body over and they're still alive, but at level zero, it's just over. Hmm. Well, that is the most Anna story <laughs> of any role playing scenario that could have happened here yeah. the mascot <laughs> character that we were all excited about did not even say anything and was the first <laughs> to hit and the first to die in Froge the Dude lives game. on at level 10 in our hearts yep listen Aww. that makes him a legend okay we're gonna put him on the flags we're gonna paint him on the banners this we're is gonna our whisper his name around the mascot vengeance and for Froge Dude yes uh all right, well, Peggy got hit, and that made her mad. So she's, she's... Oh, yeah, she died, too. <laughs> forgot about that. Okay, never mind. Uh, let's see. <laughs> that leaves Fran with her horse, and uh, let's see. What, what about has... the dogs? Can our dogs fight? We have two dogs. Um, I don't think at the moment you have, like trained your dogs, but I think it's fair to like, we, we can roll some dice and see like how they behave. Uh, and then if if your if your heroes survive and if your dogs survive, then uh, we can we can see how they get trained up. Uh, who has dogs? I do have one. Uh, Shambler has a dog. Shambler has a dog. And Red Red. There's a dog token here somewhere. Dog, fantastic. Uh, so Shambler has a dog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, what a good boy. The dog is going to have one hit point. What name does does Shambler give to their dog? Uh, I was going to name it Poa, but I know it's going to die, so I'm totally yep. not going to do that. <laughs> Smart. Um, the dog's name is Rachel. Whoa! Oh, whoa! whoa. Like, hey! Here we that, go. Rachel right here. Okay, we're worried about Poa dying, but Rachel, no, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, cool. you, I named a dog after you. Aren't you honored? Controlled by... Is it going to die? <laughs> All right. And then also we've got one other who, who has yeah, another dog. It's mine. It's Red Red's dog. Uh, and his name is Steven. Fantastic. <laughs> the most faithful dog in the world. It's He's gonna the best. It's going to the whole game. Where is Red Red? Is it weird for you, Steve? It's weird for Because <laughs> I feel like you won't want to kill the dog that's named after you. That's a really Steven's good point. first. <laughs> All right, fantastic. So Jen and uh, Anna both have, where's where is, where is Red Red? Oh, there she is. Yeah, faithful Steven uh, perched behind. Um, yeah, so like, um, you're a herder, right, Red Red? Yeah. Yeah, uh, why don't you roll? Um, That's uh, true, I should be better with dogs, because I'm a herd. Roll a d20, and if you roll a 15 or higher, you can order your dog to attack. Oh, damn. What about me? Can I do that? Five. <laughs> okay, so uh, Steven does not want to attack at the yeah. moment. Yeah. They're looking at you, grinning happily, as if nothing in the world is wrong. <laughs> um, Anna, this is Shambler's dog, right? What yeah. is Shambler's profession? A farmer. Farmer. Oh. Um, yeah, I think I think like farmers have working dogs, so it makes yeah. sense to me that you also have training with dogs. So go ahead and roll a d20. Fifteen plus, your dog will attack. Ha -ha. Oh yeah, look Rachel, at that! Rachel fight. just rocketing forwards. Um, give me a, a 1d20 plus two. Nice. Fit Holy shit! Rachel leaps past Siri and grabs Alba by the throat. Roll 1d4 for damage. Damn. Right. Listen, that's the power oh, I damn. imbue. Like I knew. Alba's arm, Alba's arm falls off in Rachel's maw, and Rachel goes running away with it. Uh, good boy, girl, good dog. <laughs> Alban is still alive, but looking very poorly. Neil. Do We're I only take one turn. character attack during my turn, or do I do oh, all my shit. characters? You you attack with all characters, so you still got Fran. 
Yeah, and that's Shambler's attack with the dog? Uh, no, actually. So Shambler should also get an attack, but of course, Shambler can only move 10 feet. <laughs> Which is like... <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's He's actually too much. His... That's too far. Uh, right, you okay. Back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Slow it down there, Shambler. <laughs> uh, he's just shaking his pitchfork in the air. I'm gonna get ya! Um, Does he use a pitchfork? Yes. That's amazing. It's 1d8 damage. It's actually one of the better weapons of any of my characters. Fantastic. Oh, I Fran has a staff. So Fran will... I mean, Fran just doesn't really want to get involved in all this, but I guess she feels like she has to. So she'll attack with her staff. All right. Go ahead and move um, her into position. Where is Fran? There she is. I have a question. Is there like a flanking bonus when you have an enemy surrounded? No. Okay. Are you going to be attacking Vine Horror B? Yes. Wait, where? Yes, this Vine one. Vine Horror A is over here. It's looking very wounded. Yeah, she'll go for that one. She's like, I'm helping. <laughs> Perfect. Go so over to corpse of Mom Church. Is it just a d20? Uh, on your character sheet, let's take a look at Fran here. Um, down a little ways, you've got an entry for your staff. And then over on the right-hand side, you see melee minus one. So if you click that little button that says minus one on it, that will automatically roll. Oh, perfect. <laughs> 16 for three damage, holy shit. <laughs> Albin just explodes, just his body bursts and he falls to the ground, vines wilting and decaying before your very eyes. Now, um, yeah, the, like thousands of small seeds spill out of his body. They're each like little slivers, like about a finger length long, silver and covered in mucus. Um, and, uh, and and that's what happens. Neil, what, what about you? What do you do? Can I ask a question real quick? Yeah. Because Fran had a horse with her. Can she be on horseback during this fight? <laughs> uh, I don't think Fran is like very good at fighting on horseback, but let me get a horse onto the table for you. Okay, great. Don't forget a goat too. <laughs> Let's take a look if there's a goat. I'll, I'll find something. Neil, in the meantime, what are you doing? Talk to me about flying tackles. If I wanted to knock somebody <laughs> kneeling, sitting, or prone. That's our first do... t-shirt. Talk to me about flying tackles. <laughs> well, how does this work? If I want to like knock uh, one of these so fine boys down. If you were a warrior, you could perform a mighty deed of arms, but unfortunately you are a, what, what are you? I'm a lover, not a fighter. A lo you're a lover. Uh, well, there you go. You're a lover, not a fighter. Well, uh, I guess this guy up here is dead, right? This dude? Yes, the one on the right is dead. Sorry, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll minus one that. Grand Neil steps up to the thing on the left and says in her old woman voice, Now you! Put him down! Put him down! She says to the vines as she wields her quill and uh, stabs at the vines over and over again. Ah, um, put him down! His mighty uh, 16 sword. hits, you deal one damage. You stab your quill into Kieran's, <laughs> Kieran, Kier, Kier, what's his name? Uh, Kiri's neck, uh, and just like Ikor spills out over your quill. Fantastic, who else goes, uh, Neil? Well, all of my people are gonna go, but y'all left me this one person on my own. My entire team is gonna get slaughtered now. Um, <laughs> right. Guy, oh, no. Playpool will come around to the backside and be like, yo, man, you gotta like stop this. It's not cool anymore. And he takes his hammer and he's not really into the combat, but he's gonna try and like hit him, hit the vines on the back to maybe, maybe knock it down. Nice, a 15 to hit with zero damage. <laughs> Guy's not very strong. He's got five strength, you see. Surely there's a minimum on that of one. I'm gonna give you one. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate that. <laughs> that pity damage. Yeah. It's like who, eleven. <laughs> who owns the goat? The goat is being sold by Pebeggy. So uh, no yeah. one owns the goat. But it's so Anna there. owns the goat. Yeah. For, for but right I Del Derp was gonna help with the transaction, but now Del Derp's dead. 
<laughs> All the goats are dead. Like to... The entire like to... goat economy has collapsed. Yeah. But do... oh no no no, it's not Del Derp, it's Red Ray. No no, Red Ray's alive with her dog. That's All right, true. here's here's the goat following behind Red Ray. All right, fantastic. The goat's Neil, name is Jean Vive. Barbara, the Barbara. barrel maker, comes on in and she takes a look at this this weird plant thing, pulls out her crowbar, which she uses to, you know, pry open barrels, and uh, tries to pry open some ribs. Oh, yeah. Look two at points that. of Your damage. characters are destroying this. Fantastic. Two damage to the fine horror. And you've got one more, right? Yes, I do. Hagatha is going to do the most important thing. She approaches Froge Dude. And, oh, man. Uh, She's gonna take a look at what it would take to stuff this frog. That way oh, he can be with us forever. Oh, um, wow. And part of the f- steps of you know stuffing the frog are to make sure that frog is stuffable. Um, so we're gonna maybe go up and inspect the body, chew a little hole in him to taste the meat, make sure that we'll be able to put the appropriate filling in him and try and like drag the frog out of combat for safety. Do you have any like background or occupation that would lend your ability to, to understand whether a creature can be stuffed? Well, I'm very old. I've survived the plague <laughs> and I carry jars of honey on me. And we all know honey is great for preserving things. It's basically That's like true. setting an it amber. It is preservative. Um, so, I, you know. I can't believe um, you're doing this. Yeah, seeing what you're doing, you hear from a far roll blessing that he could help with the beating part of the stuffing. Hmm. Good, good. I know we didn't know there was beading involved, but he's really like he's a bead person. Mm-hmm. How, how do you call that? <laughs> um, bead. An artist. He's a glass blower. He's a glass blower, but he does little glass beads. Yes. Yeah. So he could help with the filling, probably. Great. So I'll take some honey, I'll take some froge, I'll sample them together. I, I, the only way I can tell if the honey is actually going to preserve them is to taste the two side by side. So uh, how does froge taste? Okay. Um, roll one of the ten. Because you're not, you're, not, you're not trained in, like, uh, taxidermy. Uh, unfortunately, you, you, you just, like, it, it's a nice thought. It would be really motivating for the team to, to keep froge today with them. But Grand Neil doesn't know how to stuff a frog, a frogling. So, uh, unfortunately, eggs Fro- go to Fro- waste. Today will need uh, will need a, a a caring funeral instead of instead of a, a caring taxidermy. Oh, the horse's we... name is now Neil, and it is going into battle right away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Neil the he'll... horse. There we go. Uh, by the purpose. way, Anna, you have control of this horse token now. Great. It's the vine <laughs> horror, unperturbed by the death of its comrade, lashes out first at Guy. <sighs> Goodbye, Guy. Is that your, so la- your last character? Well, that's very interesting, isn't it? Uh, let's take a look at critical hits in this game. Uh-huh. Only has one life, Stephen. What are you doing to me? Let's see. Crit tables. Why is the horse so big? Big <laughs> horse <laughs> square. It's so big. It's a giant horse. It's large. It's a large sized creature. Horse Why is amazing. Horse crit is tables, big. crit table M, 392. There we go. That's what I need. Yep. Yeah, so let me take a look at this. I think that um, critical hits by monsters, a natural 20 is a critical hit. Mm -hmm. The monster's hit dice determines its crit die. Two, this is um, an undead, I think, and it's gonna deal D6. No, I think it's a humanoid. No, it's a monster. Monster D8, so it's gonna roll on the M table with a D8. So let's take a look. Critical miss on the critical hit? Just that's the result that it generates? Yeah, you just hits him so well that you don't even hit him. It certainly could, actually. It rolled a two, stunning blow. The PC falls to the bottom of the initiative count for the remainder of the battle. 
So Ooh, I'm just gonna but move zero you. damage, right? You you are already at the bottom of the initiative account, uh, and <laughs> you take one more damage. Ah, goodbye, guy. Goodbye, yeah. guy. Meanwhile, on the other side. So you have see. no more characters? No, I have no, no, more. no. He's still got Grand Neil, Hagatha, and Barbara. Oh. He gets two attacks. Oh. He's gonna slam Neil over the here, team. like with as many characters as you can possibly have. I'm gonna roll a one d three. And out of Barbara's range. one, Grand Neil is two, and Hagatha is three. Oh, thank God. Barbara. Care about Barbara. She died. <laughs> wow. Oh. <laughs> It misses you, striking out with its vine arms, but not hitting you. Barbara survives. Next up, we've got Rachel. What do your characters do? All right. Um, so just to, uh, if I have 30 move speed, that means I can cover six squares? Yes, each of these squares is five feet. <clears throat> so uh, Beverly, pumped up by a series, you know, huge swing, uh, massive damage. She's got to she's gotta keep her status in the relationship, keep making her girlfriend feel safe before she's the one feeling safe. So she's going to rush into this battle as well and take a big swing at the remaining plant guy with her hammer. Oh, oh no. Overbalancing oh. and missing. And way too much of a rush. But Siri sees this as a bit of a game. She's having fun here, and so she's gonna run right into it, and she's gonna take her own swing. And... Oh, she whiffs that as well. This is very embarrassing for both of them. Let's see. Uh, so a uh, quick question about um, when I throw my dagger, do I have to retrieve it to throw it again? Do you only have one dagger? I believe so. Then yes. <laughs> okay. Level so, zero characters. So good. Right? <laughs> Dune Tish is gonna slowly creep in here, grab her dagger. That mm -hmm. was four squares. And then, excuse me, Fran. She feels kind of safe over here by the pup. And is that close enough range now? Uh, oh, yeah, totally. Dagger to chuck that. But everybody's oh, no. flubbing. And Agnes. <laughs> now that you're firing into melee with a ranged weapon, 50% chance to hit someone else. Well, that has so, been thrown, so you can't would unthrow Would you roll 1d2 for me, and on a one, you're gonna hit another player. Yep, slash roll. Oh, yes, it was slash roll. Yeah, Two, you do not. Your dagger flies wide. It's it's lying somewhere in the grass off this away, so you can go pick it back up again, but uh, it's gonna take you some uh, some doing. Got it. That uh, it for you? Yeah. You still got Agnes. Yes, uh, Beverly and, and Siri both look at Dune Tush like, the hell was that? Uh, and Agnes seeing this uh, clown fiesta go down is gonna continue to move to keep bodies between her, but okay. she's gonna just stay the hell out of this fight. All right, cool. Jen, who do you have left? Two people. Well, okay. it's the mom and the son. It's uh, Redra yes. and Growlabless. The disappointment. <laughs> um, hey, look, Growlabless is succeeding beyond other characters' wildest imaginations. Yeah. Well, he's alive. That's yes. already an that, accomplishment. That's what he said. Think of Froze Juday when 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 you <laughs> you say these things. Yeah, acknowledge your privilege as living. Grawl right. well, <laughs> feels pretty good about his life decisions right now, and he's wondering why. Why is his mom? Why is she still fighting? It's not a good idea. Um, but his mom, she's on a mission right now, and her mission is to kill these little dudes. Um, so I don't know if I can actually reach there. Oh yeah, I think I can get there. So can she? run around and I guess go on top of oh yeah there's some room actually I was gonna say on top of Froge do this corpse but yeah you you could move here yeah I guess I'll just move here this is simpler <laughs> uh, yeah then she's gonna keep going with her um, her spear uh, or staff I mean mm -hmm. um, and I guess yeah the lightning didn't work so she's gonna say Grow a blast if I hit this one, it is proof that we can fight these things and that you must come out of hiding. 
I love it. And then she goes for it. Nope. <laughs> Growl Bless has the right decision. And he's and like, has been told wrong. you. <laughs> told you, you it's a bad to, idea. Are you going to order Steven to attack? Yes, yes. Steven ahead, boy. Roll, roll a d20 <laughs> and on a 15 plus. You successfully uh, encourage Steven to leap into the fray. Steven, oh, come on. Steven goes for it. <laughs> Show him what we're made of, <laughs> Steven. <laughs> Roll d20 plus two. <laughs> Girl of Bliss is like, no, Steven, come back. <laughs> There's eight people standing around this plant, just like oh, whipping it. <laughs> Steven hits. Steven Roll is a, a good boy. Steven does d4 damage. Steven Four does three. Nice. Look at that mighty attack. Fantastic. <laughs> Steven. Red Red is so proud of Steven right now. She was like, I see? Presume. I, I got to raise this one well, at least, everybody. <laughs> I presume that Growl Bless is remaining where he stands. Yeah, he's like looking for something he could throw. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. maybe like a a branch or something. Yeah, that like could uh, hurt somebody for D1 damage or something. There's there's a there's a branch you could definitely like pull off. Um, but this is going to be awkward. You're going to have to throw it using a d16 instead of a d20. That's fine. Yeah, Grola Bless, like, he's feeling a little bit of guilt seeing Steven fighting because he really cares for Steven. So mm -hmm. he, mm -hmm. he, grabs a, he grabs a stick and then makes his way closer. Okay. He's like, fine, I'm coming. <laughs> Jeez. And is he going to throw? Um, yeah, yeah, he's gonna throw the stick, and then he says, Steven, don't, don't catch the stick. <laughs> <laughs> so the way to do this, Jen, is on your character sheet, there's this hexagon that, that says action die with d20 in it. Yeah. You click the d20, you can change that to d16. Ooh, yeah, got it. And then you can just click range for your hammer. Okay. Oh. Holy shit! <laughs> You rolled a 17. So unfortunately you didn't roll a 20, which means you don't crit, even though you rolled the highest you can on the die that you had, but you do two damage with your stick. Uh, roll of Less is runs like- off and, uh, Grabs the stick. Oh. Roll of Less is like really surprised. You can see his, like, his eyes are big, really big right now. And Redra is so confused. She like turns back to see like who threw this. <laughs> And then she's like, she looks at Agnes, presuming that she threw the stick, and she goes like, good job, Agnes. I knew you'd be worthy. <laughs> nice. Agnes yeah. will take a drive-by compliment any day of the week. She's like, <laughs> it's your turn. Uh, all right. Well, first things first, um, Fran is, how, how much control do I have over Neil the horse? Uh, basically none. Neil is like a draft horse. You use Neil for plowing your fields. Uh, he doesn't understand much of anything in the way of anything. Well, he definitely at least knows like a call to food, right? Yes. All right. So Fran is going to call Neil the horse toward the vine monster as though it were breakfast. Okay. <laughs> what are you hoping to uh, achieve with this? <laughs> Uh, trying to get I me hope, killed, Stephen. I hope that the, the the horse will come, like sniffing around the vines. But as soon as the vines spook the horse, the horse will rear up and pummel it with their hooves. All right, okay, I can see this. Um, so uh, I think I'm gonna do this in two parts. One is give me a d20 roll, and on a 10 plus, uh, you will have successfully called the horse. The horse is gonna make a will wisdom saving throw or a will save because it, it might already be spooked. Uh, so let's see, on an 11 plus, it succeeds. No, Neil is looking, his, his eyes are wide and rolling and you can see the whites all around them and his nostrils are flaring and he's going. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> so that's what Neil's up to. Oh, thanks for, thanks for nothing, Neil, the horse. <laughs> uh, all right, well, in that case, Fran will like, is there even room to get involved melee right now? There's space right here. There's also, you could go stand over Froge Duday and avenge his fallen state. Fran's just like, Fran's very put put out by this whole thing. She's just like, 
like very frustrated. This is not what she signed up for. The horse isn't coming, but she'll, yeah, she'll join and she'll stand over. She'll like gingerly step over Froge and kind of like jab with her staff. Yep. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I think we, we may, in fact, now need to look at the rules for fumbles. But it wasn't a natural one. It was a Everybody's staying in a circle and miss. <laughs> Oh, was it not a natural one? That's right. You rolled a two minus one. Okay, you don't. You don't have to. You don't have to roll a fumble. I just like. I was half joking when I was like, "Let it be seen that I used up all my luck on this first roll," <laughs> but it just continues to be absolutely true. You know, Fran is gonna make it all the way. She's gonna. She's gonna become a hero. It's gonna be amazing. Uh, I guess also Shambler is. Oh, it's going to move another 10 feet in the well, direction first, of battle. Well, first, Chandler is going to tell Rachel to get at it and run over and, and bite the the vines. Yeah, get give em. me that d20 roll. Get him, Rachel. Oh. Arr, arr, arr. Yeah, Holy Rachel's shit. My, my champion. Rachel drops the arm that she's carrying in her mouth and runs <laughs> over to attack the other thing. Drop it, roll drop it. Attack. <laughs> is it just d20 plus two i think you have a thing with like having secondary characters do a lot yes, better than your that's mates. so true <laughs> like they're usually pretty good uh rachel hits of roll a d4 good job rachel <laughs> it's real meta now <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, Rachel doesn't kill it, but she tears off a leg and goes running away with it. And it, she's like prancing, you know, when a dog gets a stick and it's like celebrating as it runs away. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's like this, this like tendon that's just twirling around yeah. in the air. Yeah, this is a great game. Good girl, dog. Rachel. Neil, you gotta take this thing out, man. Well, Barbara's Are you talking about the horse? Or? Yeah. Neil the horse. Corby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Barbara will crowbar the creepy creature one more time. Nice. You crowbar its skull open, laying it out on the field dead. It falls and bursts open on all of these silvery seeds burst out of its chest. Fan Imagine. Fantastic. This is like the printer scene in office space. <laughs> like all these people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There you go. Successfully killed your first encounter in Dungeon Crawl Classics. Well done, folks. Huzzah! Excellent. Got him. So yeah, did you see, Mama, I you. threw a stick. <laughs> What's that? I said, did you see, Mama, I threw a stick. <laughs> I did good. Yeah, all right. So meanwhile, um, yeah. Up ahead of you, you see the uh, yeah. You see the uh, the the keep looming up above you. This this like rammed earth rammed earth mound rises up to meet the walls, which are ancient and crumbling. And and interestingly, when you look at the walls, they're all like they're not wrought stone. They're like huge dolmens and menhirs that have been pulled up and piled up to create these walls. You can even see like ancient runes like carved and graven into some of the stones. Um, and interestingly, like the structure of this uh, building has all these like vines and leaves and like fetid pools sort of like pooling in cracks in the stone. Uh, and there's just like clouds of midges and gnats and stuff swarming in the air here. So now that now that you've lost a number of your comrades and found uh, two others turned into horrible vine monsters, what do the remainder survivors of you do? Chandler is going to find and calm the goat. Okay. Agatha is going go to sample Viev. one of these vines. She'll uh, crack off an end of it and give it a little chew, trying not to swallow unless it tastes acceptable. Who's doing that, Hagatha? Hagatha, yeah. Just a quick little well, nibble nibble. Well, this is very interesting. Very interesting <laughs> indeed. Um, what kind of saving throws do you have? 
<laughs> That's how we another fortitude, character. Fortitude reflex and willpower. Yeah, uh, give me a fortitude saving throw. This is only DC five. Okay, cool. So you, you 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 like chew on one of these vines and it's super bitter and it makes your tongue go numb. But uh, mm. other than that, uh, nothing else happens. Oh, but Rachel the dog is fine, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Ra oh. Rachel the dog and Steven the dog, both fine. Despite chewing on these plant parts. This could Despite. be quite useful in medicine, I think. It's often nice to numb the pain of an operation. Here, help me gather these vines, would you please? She says to whoever this redheaded person is. Uh, Siri just moves on the other side of Beverly. But, Fran, surely you would help an old woman lean over to gather these vines, wouldn't you, Franny? Who are you? Agatha's my name. I don't I don't do plants. Is there no one that would help an elderly woman harvest her plants? <laughs> Red Red Tish kinda Red Red starts up picking you. them up. Yeah. Thank you, dear. Can I add nice. vines to my gear? Yeah, go ahead and like, uh, just to your equipment, just add, you know, vine clippings. Shambler is going to go loot Froge and Pavegi and cool. mutter things like, wish not, want not, as he does it. Oh, uh, Red <laughs> yeah. Ref feels inspired Red and is going to loot uh, my fallen party members as well. <laughs> Excellent. Go ahead and make and sure you consolidate your, consolidate your gear. Remember, you can carry a unique number of items equal to your strength. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's... Dina is kind of like right behind Hagatha, and she's going to watch Hagatha touch a thing and exactly how she does it, and then she's going to copy the move precisely because she doesn't want to innovate here in a, in a dangerous area. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Thank you. Dinatesh looks at you like this, but continues. So I looted Mumchuro. Froge was carrying a steel vial and a large sack, but the contents of, no of those is not disclosed. So were they just an empty steel vial and an empty large sack? Yes. The frog liked containers. <laughs> the container collector. I relate, to honestly. Be prepared. <laughs> Having containers is valuable because then you can like put other things in them. Yeah. Oh, wow, Del Derp has so much stuff. Del Derp, who was a peddler, it makes a lot of sense. She had torches, a grappling hook, an iron skillet. Amazing. Shambler and already has thieves tools, so he kind of is like, I don't need these, and holds them out to Fran. Fran takes them. Uh, Agnes wants to examine some of the silver seeds. So first she's gonna like kick one out of like the slime that they're in, and yeah. then just kind of like move it around with her foot and see if anything happens. Yeah, let's see. Um... So like, Kicking them and moving them around, like they've still got all this mucus all over them. Um, but you notice uh, upon investigating a little more closely, like you nudge one with a foot and it like moves a little bit weirdly. Um, when you when you like kneel down and look at it closely, you can see that these seeds have tiny little cilia all along their sides, and they're moving very very slowly. But the seeds themselves are actually like mobile. Can I? kick it with my foot until it like opens like a seed pod is it like about you said about a finger long i mean it, it's really just like a seed that's like a finger Ooh, okay. a finger's length um i think if you like kick it and crush it and like smash it like eventually you break it it's not like a pod so there's not like seeds inside but you smash it until it like you know splinters and breaks like you know a pumpkin seed might and and then yeah, it, there's it, no it, guts or viscera or... no yeah it's just seed Oof. Hi. I just realized that Mum Chiro had the combat shovel. Oh no! 
Mm. You're gonna well, have to I mean, I do forward. pick it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're keeping Absolutely. that shovel. Oh, I forgot about the weapons. Yeah, could come in handy. Yeah. Yep. Speaking of weapons, uh, Kiri's corpse still has both a short sword and a dagger. Whoa. <laughs> can Dunetir steal the second dagger? So now she's got two in her. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. The yeah. You can recover the other dagger, grab Kiri's dagger. There's a short sword up for grabs, so to speak. Who wants it? Says Red Red, grabbing the sword. All right, it's mine. I'll take it. Oh, okay, <laughs> cool. Sure, you can have it. As long as you don't act like a coward. <laughs> so Excuse short sword me. does 1d6 damage. Right. I hand it over. Give that. Oh. Um, you see Red Red handing over a torch to um, Grolobless. Cool, cool. Since you like to stand in the back, at least you might as well hold the torch. He takes it. Steven brings back um, the stick. Yes. <laughs> to Red Red, and she says- The stick uh, that Grolobless threw. Yes. He he brings it back to Grolobless, and Grolobless pets him. Good job, Steven. I knew I could count on you. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel is sitting proudly next to Shambler with the leg still in her mouth. <laughs> Amazing. And not like chewing on it, just like carrying it around like a dog does when they have a favorite toy. They're just like mm -hmm. presenting it to everyone. They're very proud. Mm -hmm. Um, Bless notices that there was a shovel uh, on one of the corpses and suggests that we bury the dead. Yes. Uh... Froge deserves a funeral. I say we bury them near this tree. That way we can find them later if we need to <laughs> dig them up. Shambler get, like goes over and starts helping digging because he's a farmer. Fantastic. Hmm. Yeah, you know, like the, the earth here is um, like has a number of small stones in it. And as you dig them up, you can see even some of them are like chipped and crumbled pieces of like ancient men here or dolmen. And some of them even have runes on them. But other than that, the earth is is fairly giving, and you manage to to dig a dig a. Are you digging like a set of graves for these poor deceased characters? One mm -hmm. big pit. Yeah, one big. Yeah, one big pit sounds more efficient. No, I mean, we don't have too much that. time, I guess. Yeah. What are you doing with the, the 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 bodies of poor Kiri and Alban? Oh, we should probably bring those back. Let's. Leave them on top, shall we? Yeah, I suppose we should have a doctor study them or something. But there might be a reward for the return of their corpses. So I'm hearing like, dig a pit, bury your allies, and then like move the vine horror corpses over on top of the, the filled pit. Yes. Yeah. Is there any identifying like trinket or anything that we'd be able to take from the blacksmiths to show that we found them? I mean, like the the sword and the dagger are like the work of their mother, the town smith. So like that is that is something that you could show and be like, hey, you know, we we took this off of your son. We're sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Siri is a wander. None of my girls are super interested in the burying and stuff or the bodies. Uh, they're just gonna take a look around for any other potential danger in the space, any other clues as to what they might go inside. Uh, yeah. Siri's a pretty experienced adventurer. So let's see. Mm -hmm. Let's see what I can tell you about here. Let's see, who are you looking with? Um, I'm looking with Siri, and I'm mostly checking like the entrance to track if anyone has come this way before. If this is a place where wild animals might have taken roost, and we have to worry about you know a family of cougars jumping out at us. 
or yeah so um you you do notice in the in the dirt of the the road like there are animal footprints they it looks almost like a lion um mm -hmm. and then if you if you sort of like move back and forth and look around uh deep inside the keep here you can see that there's this inner area and uh there's a well deep back in the courtyard of the keep and far in the back corner like it's 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 quite light out and you can see through this opening far in the back corner it looks like the back wall of the keep has collapsed into a landslide and, and that's kind of what you can see from here we get the sense animals have kind of been coming and going and that's definitely what it looks like. Uh, there's a number of footprints. There's also a number of uh, footprints of villagers. Like you can see like the, the same kind of boot that they that they uh, use in uh, uh, Oakwell. And one other question, is a lion typical around here or would this be like something to immediately draw attention to or feel like people would say, I'm silly for saying it loud? Um, I guess <laughs> like, what, what, is, what is Siri's background? What's her occupation? Siri is, is a wanderer primarily. She kind of like yeah. goes from town to town, trades and adventure and tales and rumors. And I think this this would be the sort of thing that Siri would know. Um, it looks like it looks like like a mountain lion or a cougar or something like that. Like the kind of the, the kind of wild cat that wouldn't be terribly out of place, but there is something weird about the paw print. Okay. Um, it definitely doesn't look completely normal to your experience of traveling and seeing like wild cat paw prints. It's it's a bit larger and there's like two extra like claws instead of just like the occasional one that cats sometimes have. Uh, something strange is going on here. Okay. So Siri's gonna say to uh, Beverly, but quite loudly so anyone else can do with this information what they will. But uh, we gotta be careful, Beverly. There's a big cat around here and well, a lot of weird stuff afoot. These plant things aren't the only thing we're going to have to worry about. Rachel ain't afraid of no big cat. That dog ain't seen what I'm talking about. Some real where the red fern grows action coming up. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Growlbless places little glass beads on top of the closed up grave. Um, mm -hmm. He has this on him because he's a glass blower, so he has many little glass beads. Nice. It's very Fran soft. is like trying to think about how to protect uh, Neil and Goatviev, but <laughs> leaving them out here if there's big cats probably sounds like a bad idea, so she resigns herself to just bringing them along. <laughs> Oh. Sounds like it. I don't know. That sounds like a goat. Yeah. yeah. Siri nods More at like you me. as you take the reins in hand. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So, what's the next course of action? Press on. Uh, Grola Bless uh, says, uh, I think we should just go back. You know, uh, we did what we had to, right? Like, we're, we're done with today. Now, now, now. Don't be silly, says Grand Neil. We've come a long way. A bunch of us have already died, and if we just turn back now, well, then they've just died for nothing. So, we should probably head in and see what's about. Who wants to be the first one to go? Agnes takes two steps back from the entrance. <laughs> Barbara, Rolla would you show like... these children how it's done? Barbara will step forward. Volunteer to be the first one in the gate. Siri's gonna follow her and kind of scout around as she goes in. Yeah, red, red dress following. Okay. Agnes so, sticking to the outside, Beverly following Siri. Barbara's gonna try and uh, get in maybe 40 or 50 feet by herself and scout out, take a look before waving the rest of the party on. So, okay. alone, walks forward. <laughs> As the last one over here by the corpses, by the way, Dune Tush is going to grab all the glass beads that you left behind. <laughs> My glass beads. Is that seven beads, Jen? Yeah, I think I would have put one down per dead. That makes sense. 
I'm just putting little colors on your characters so I can very easily at a glance understand uh, who is who. Fantastic. Then, Barbara, you step into the inner courtyard of the keep. And that is where we should take our second five minute break for today. Ooh. Don't go anywhere, Chet. We're gonna come back with another approximately two hours of pawns and patrons and see what these characters get up to in this terrifying keep. 